Battle of the Challenges podcast. I'm David Lauer. And I'm Vince Cloud. The Duel, episode 13 review. Okay, I was hoping you would take away the intro from there because I forgot what episode it was. This is an awesome episode. I really like this. Yeah. It's called Around the Block. Let's dive back into the beginning of the episode real quick. Was that CT and DM at the beginning of the oh, episode? Oh yeah. They had mattresses all over the deck and they were pole wrestling. It was real cute. Yeah, he was coaching her up and telling her a little bit about technique, but then also about not letting the other competitors get in her head. Don't let them say you're not good enough, you're not strong enough. It's all about the fight and the want. It was really a sweet moment. It's nice that these scenes open up every episode. You're just like, yes, I believe in love. I know, <laughs> yeah. That was quite the opposite of the previous season where we were covering Battle of the X2. I mean, talk about the complete opposite. You didn't believe in shit in that season. No, is everything is doomed and everyone's going to hell, basically, because <laughs> everyone hates each other and it's all backstabbing. The newer seasons are all very uh, down in the dumps and like... Gritty, reboot, Dark Knight Rises type. Non-stop yeah. drama. This season here, at least, was very nice because it's like, oh, something's happening in the house, but it doesn't have to be drama. It can be something nice. Yeah. And you're like, oh, this is a sweet <laughs> moment where people are getting along. Not everything has to be a moment of conflict. And C.T. is saying in his confessional, he's like, I'm glad she's here. She uh, keeps me preoccupied. I feel like if she wasn't here, I'd just be snapping at people. Yeah, that's completely honest, because of what we've seen of C.T. in later seasons. Like, if he has a girl next to him that he likes, yeah, the soft side of C.T., he'll do anything to, like, get a girl's affection. He'll be super nice, super caring. But then if he doesn't have that... Then it's like, okay, CT just goes in the Donkey Kong mode where he's just a gorilla and he's like, I'm going to smash heads. So it's the reason that we see this nice side of CT is just because DM's there. Yeah, maybe CT knows himself. He's like, listen, I'm fucking Mr. Hyde. And when I'm in love, I'm fucking Dr. Jack. Oh, shit, he is. He knows himself. He needs love. Yeah. Any way he can get it. That is a perfect analogy. Thank you. Damn. Just broke my brain with that one. <laughs> Holy shit. All right, so Dr. Jekyll is talking to DM, just talking her up. You yeah, have to have confidence. And he's also saying, you might have to go into the duel. And even then, you can kick ass. But DM's like, no, no, I don't want to do that. And CD's like, what, what are you talking about? And DM's just saying, I don't like that. <laughs> like, I'm like, what, do you, what, what does that mean? I mean, it makes sense, though, because she doesn't want to go into a duel because... Let's be honest, DM really hasn't gotten tested a whole lot this season. She's shown that she can run long distances and have endurance, but her strength and athletic ability is very minimal. There's no running in the duel. And that's her strength. Rightfully, she is afraid to go in. Meanwhile, Anissa is talking to Wes, and uh, she's saying something like, I don't know, I mean, I, I almost want to tune out every single time Anissa comes on. Yeah, I've seen her in a couple seasons, and she's always been boring to me. So. Well, she does have one characteristic that makes her stand out, but it's not very positive, and we're about to uh, discuss it. So she's there with Wes, and Nisa's like, I don't have a read on Jody. I don't know who she would call out. But this begins this thing when Anissa say, like, I don't want to win the wrong way. It sucks that the final four girls, they're not going to play fair. And she's trying to say, like, you know, that's a lot of money, 150000 but... It's not going to make me feel good on the inside if I went it the wrong way or some shit. What so what do you think she means by the wrong way? I don't know what she's saying. Like, to me, Anissa is a walking soundbite. She says a lot of stuff that makes it on air. She can describe a mission. She can describe an elimination. She can talk smack. But that's about it. You said that perfectly. She is a walking soundbite where she said, I don't want to do it the wrong way. But it's like, uh, the reason I asked you, what do you think she means by that? You had no idea. I, I had no idea. Like, she says the right thing, but it doesn't necessarily always mesh with her actions or what you think her intentions are. What she's saying is something that's going to go on a trailer or on a commercial to advertise and stuff. It's almost like she's the first and one and only challenger that's actually a Stepford wife. You know what I mean? She's a robot. Is that a reference. separate wife? Yeah. Is? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, built to give the challenge what it needs, aka sound bites, aka elimination wins. So she's so, like a fembot. Spoiler alert: This is only her like maybe third or fourth 
challenge. She's done like maybe 10 or 11 now. She's never blown me away like, oh yes, I'm rooting for her. And I'm never rooting against her either. I'm not rooting for her or against her. It's just she's bland to me. I hate to either throw the- this other person under the bus because I feel like I like her more than this comparison. Okay. But uh, Cara Maria. But Cara Maria, she has that weird pirate hair going on. So she's a little more aesthetically pleasing to the eyes. But other than that... She's stuck in Pirates of the Caribbean Johnny Depp. Anissa is stuck in every other movie Johnny Depp. Because, you know, she's constantly changing her looks and exactly. shit. Exactly. Okay, so all joking aside, maybe she's not a robot. Maybe she has some fucking blackmail, some juicy shit on MTV The Challenge. And that's why she's on every season. Let's step away from Anissa, all right? Let's get on to something a little bit more positive. Something I like to talk about. Svetlana. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was going to be coconuts. I knew. Like something I want to talk about. Now my next word is coconuts. <laughs> Can I finish my damn sentence, please? Svetlana wants to duel Jody. She wants her to lose eventually so she could call her in and take her out. Yeah. And like that is badass. It's super gutsy. Jody is a great competitor. It's always been like the best competitors this season were like Beth, Robin, and Jody. Beth, she's gotten knocked out a while ago. Robin, she's gotten knocked out. Now, Jody is like that last top physical performer. Mm-hmm. And I think below her is probably Anissa. And then I would say Svetlana, then DM. Oh, man. It's funny that you mentioned Beth and Robin again. Because, yeah, those were the top three, Jody included. However, Beth had the most personality. Robin, just a little bit less. Jody, I mean, come on. She's on camera. She's like, well, I hope I win. That would be great. I don't want to go into a duel. And that's exactly. fine. But it's just like, oh, God, it's just so boring, you know? <laughs> like, she is super boring. But I do like the fact that her only focus is nothing to do with drama or personal relationships in the house. Yeah. It's only about winning these challenges, and that's admirable. All right, so now we're at the mission, around the block. This is a 40-foot truss. Is that the yeah. word? Yeah, steel truss. Rectangular machinery in the sky. Pretty cool, pretty scary. Basically a uh, scaffolding or something, but it's, you know, those metal bars, and you have to climb up the side. Yeah. You got to grab those flags. You got to hang on all the flags, and every flag is a point value. Mm. They're all worth one point other than the flag in the very top center with three and a half. It's so, a tiebreaker flag. It's a temptation to go for that flag because you could win by a half. Might yep. as well go for it. So now they're like, CT, you won the duel, so now you get to choose the order in which the females go against each other. They're going to have two heats, and then the winner of both those heats are going to go into a final. You know, they're, they're playing for safety. And then CT gets to decide the guy's order, and basically one guy gets the buy. Yep, and obviously he's going to pick himself, so that way he doesn't have to do it twice. He's going to have Wes and Brad figure out who the winner is and then go against him. But it's a female duel day, ultimately, yeah, so it's... Doesn't matter. You know, the only thing that the guys have to work for today is the return of the Ion Focus Projector. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't seen that in a while. No, it's been at least two or three episodes since we saw that prize. Let's start off with the girls, the first round. Jody versus Svetlana. They did pretty good. I mean, Jody They're already... Really good. Jody seemed athlete. to have a little bit of a head start. Or maybe not a head start, but about halfway through, like halfway up it. She seemed to pull away by, like, a flag or so. Mm. But Svetlana, she's stuffing them in her shirt. Stuffing those flags in there as best she can. But not good enough, because they're actually both going for the center flag, and Svetlana drops three flags, starts monkey barring over across, and then drops another flag. Yeah, there was no more room for flags. Like, they just started (laughs) popping out, and it was almost comical. (laughs) You want to make light of this? I mean, this was Svetlana's chance, man. I don't know how to explain it, but yeah, those flags fell out. She lost four fucking flags. I mean, this is the complete opposite of what happened with her in the episode five. Remember when she found the extra yeah, flag? Yeah, oh, it was an yeah. extra flag. Weird. Yeah, man. I mean, like, she's losing flags. Svetlana's trying to monkey bar to the center, and so is Jody, but Jody fucking drops. And then Svetlana fell afterward immediately. Yep. Yeah. But Jody ultimately had more flags. Yeah, she had 16, and Svetlana lost four flags, leaving her with 12. Do the math, they could have tied. It's tragic. Brad versus Wes. Brad actually went up way faster than Wes. In fact, he um, got to the center flag, and Wes didn't even get to the monkey bar portion of it. 
Wes yeah. was kind of low at, down. At there. the end point, he was kind of looking over at Brad and being like, oh shit, I'm done for. In the end, Wes only had 15 flags. Brad ends up with 19 and a half. Yep, 19 and a half is the top that you can have. Yeah, and Wes, he got 15. Jody got 16. Come on, Wes. All right, now we go to Anissa versus Diem. Diem, oh, fucking rocking it. He did awesome in this. We kind of said that they're both on the bottom. Like the top yeah. two are Jody and Svetlana. So let's see how these two go against each other. Fucking Diem, she did it. Like she, you know, with a lot of help from CT on the ground. He was being the CT cheerleader, basically. Yeah, he was. Yeah, that was his role throughout the episode. Basically totally cheering did. her on. But uh, this was something that really seemed to go towards her strength. Because when you're monkey barring or climbing up something, the lighter you are, the less work your arms have to do. So, I mean, it totally works in Diem's favor because she's skinny as a rail. At the end of it all, Diem actually gets to that middle flag. To me, like, that's impressive. If you do that at all, that's pretty fucking impressive. That's yeah. a lot of climbing. And she looked hot. She took the flag off. And uh, Anissa only has 15. So uh, Wes and Anissa are doing piss poorly. Diem wins. Awesome for her. 19 and a half. They're getting lowered down to the ground. And Anissa turns to Diem and says... And this is a quote from a confessional. Yep. Anissa saying, this is what I told Diem on the scaffolding while it was being lowered. She says, I'm not going to vote for you because I feel like you're going to win today's challenge. Because I want to call in Jody into the duel. Uh, that second part of, like, because I want to vote Jody into the duel, I'm guessing that's pure confessional. Yeah. Diem's, like, not worrying too much about going in. Is just like trying to beat Jody, but even if she doesn't beat Jody, now she could completely be calm about the whole thing. It's all she said, she said, because they didn't actually show us the footage of what was said on the scaffolding. It was in confessionals, so we exactly don't know whether we should believe Anissa or Diem, like what exactly was said, but Diem says she's not going to vote me in no matter what. Mm. And then from Anissa's point of view, I'm not going to vote you in because I thought you were going to win. But that doesn't make sense. If she wins, of course, you can't vote someone in who wins, right? Yeah, this doesn't make any sense. The exchange between the two of them is misconstrued, yet it didn't make any sense to begin with. It's fucking bizarre. Yeah. We get to the guys' finals, and CT is going to be there, obviously. He had the bye. Yeah. Versus Brad. And uh, they start up, you know, Brad went super fast against Wes. CT is just as fast as Brad going up this thing. In fact, CT, he actually just lets a flag drop and pass a few flags. He just monkey bars quickly to the middle three-and-a-half point flag, wins it automatically. That right there, his uh, wherewithal to know, hey, I can skip a few of those one-point flags to go for the final flag, that just came apart because he had the buy. He was able to actually watch the game get played, analyze it, and be like, hey, this is a smart thing to do. So he just fucking books it to that last flag. Brad is hanging there with 15 flags. CT wins by 16 and a half. It's funny because Brad, all he has to say about it is basically the the rundown of what CT just did. He's like, I should have skipped flags, let some fall, just go to that center one. Finally, the finals for the girls. It's Jody versus Diem. Diem saying, wow, I'm not going to get voted in no matter what, but I should try and beat Jody. You know, might as well try. So they start. Diem seemed like she was always a little bit behind. But then once Jody started to get to that horizontal part, she had her feet out in front of her and it seemed to slow her down a little bit. And then Diem hooked it up her last like six feet or whatever and started, hey, I'm going to monkey bar it across because that'll be faster than having my feet and my arms entangled in it. She skips flags and shit. Like the whole time CT is her coach yep. shouting out everything and Diem's doing it. It's great. But she can't get to the center quick enough. Yep. Jody's Slow got her short. legs already like in the way. Like even if yeah, she got close, she could have kicked. Yeah. I'm gonna knock at your teeth. <laughs> Takes out the flag. Like Jody wins again. Jody, she's always super dominant. There's no denying it. It's weird. I feel kind of sorry for her in some way because as fans, we're kind of bored with Jody because like a, she doesn't say anything much to the camera. And B, she always wins, so there's no drama there. Almost like the producers are like, hey, Jody, say something. And she's like, oh, well, I really needed to get that flag, so I did it. And they're like, wow, oh, thanks. <laughs> well, I mean, she's yeah. not exactly built for reality television when it comes to drama or intrigue. It's, yeah. She's just a competitor. Uh, so now this is CT's third win. 
He wins the in focus projector. This is Jody's sixth win this season. It's been dominating. Now we're at the Liberations. Jody wins, picks CT because he won two. CT chooses DM. DM chooses Wes. Kind of a bitch move to make Wes pick between his friends because Brad gets to walk away, doesn't have to make any decisions. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, she could have picked Brad. Well, Brad would have picked Nisa. Oh, shit, yeah. Yeah, so that's probably why she picked Wes. So Diem wants Anissa to make the choice because she knows that Anissa isn't going to pick her. Oh, shit. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yes. I can't believe I didn't think of it until now, and neither did you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so disappointed in both of us. Wes has to choose between Svetlana and Anissa. He chooses Svetlana. Leading up to this point, Diem is just kind of smiling a little bit. Just like the slight smile because she knows she's not going in. She feels relaxed. Her and CT are going on to the next episode. But, like, it didn't occur to her that maybe Anissa wouldn't want to go against her friend Svetlana. Apparently it never crossed her mind, which is kind of questionable. Like Anissa said, I'm not voting you in because you're winning today. But she didn't win. So that still didn't dawn on D. I don't know. I don't know how to stand well, on this. But they didn't exactly show that conversation. We're just hearing both sides of the story. So we don't know what the full truth is. So now Anissa says, all right, DM, get over here. She walks up and she's like, oh, I thought you said you weren't going to vote me in yeah. up there, but okay, whatever. You know, that's cool. It's cool. Yeah, what the you fuck? <laughs> she completely like, what the fuck moment of like, um, now what you were just saying. I mean, she was pissed. She was livid at Anissa, but Anissa's like, girl, I thought it's because you were going to fucking win. I don't but know. It, it was, doesn't make sense. It was worded weird. If, if DM did win, of course you're not going to vote yeah, her in because you correct. can't vote her in. Totally. Whatever was said there that we did not hear, and I feel like the producers deliberately did not show that. They only showed the confessionals of what they were saying what was said. To me, right? the whole point is that this hinges on a quote. Knowing Anissa, knowing how fucking an oddball that she is, she could have very well said, I'm not going to vote for you because I feel like you're going to win today's challenge. That doesn't make any sense. It's just, Anissa, she fits into every scenario, or she forces herself into every scenario. Spoiler alert, because I've seen a lot of challenges with Anissa, and that's her thing. She's like this weird biological... She's like, like a chameleon who will try and say the right thing at the right so time. So some sort of robot which... chameleon. All right, so let's talk about... Uh, Anissa picks Diem, then Anissa picks the card. It's I can. CT is like, this isn't what I wanted for Diem. And he's nervous about it. Diem, on the other hand, she's annoyed. She's like, I wanted this to be physical. I wanted to, like, wrestle with Anissa. Okay, so then after everyone's supposed to disperse, Anissa, that's when she tries to get a hold of Diem again and says, hey, I just, I wanted you to win. And, you know, it's the back and forth of Diem's like, yeah, but you can't change your mind once you said that. And, you know, you blah, blah, blah. You're a liar. And Anissa doesn't have anything to say. She just kind of stands there. And so does DM. And then finally DM's like, okay, fine, well, I, I guess I'll walk away. <laughs> yeah. The awkward stared out after the argument. And I was like, mm, okay, uh, cameras are still rolling. Let's walk away. The thing is, is the whole way this season is set up is DM is a cancer survivor. You know, we all feel sorry for DM, so we give her the benefit of the doubt. And she's a really nice, sweet girl. So if you ever are on the wrong side of DM, we're not going to be on your side. Like, and that's how Anissa came across here. Like, if this was Anissa doing this against Jody or Svetlana, I would brush it off. And be like, eh, whatever. <laughs> it's yet. the game. They're playing the game. <clears throat> but the fact she does it against Diem, then it's like, oh, that's a whole other level. Yeah, man. I mean, because Anissa returns to the house and she's moping around. She's like, I feel terrible. And Svetlana's like, hold on. Diem, she thinks she's too good for the duels. I've been in two of them. Anissa, you've been in two of them, and she has to go on her first one, and she's fucking crying about it. Like, get over it. And again, that's that Lana's Russian gangster self coming out. It's pretty sweet, man. <laughs> she says, she's a good person. She's referring to Diem. She's like, she's a good person, but that's not what this game's about. She's so centered. She makes it all make sense. Okay, so now, uh, CT, once again, I mean, there's, oh my god, there's so many scenes of this for so, was this like the super adorable scene where he's like rubbing her head and like kissing her? Was that the same scene? The same. The very same. Yeah. I mean, it was an adorable scene. Like, it was just like, CT showing love for DM, DM showing love for CT. 
Absolutely. Uh, but, but the problem with this is that I have some dialogue here that might paint it a little bit differently. Oh, uh, do tell, do so, tell. <laughs> CT says, you're stronger than Anissa, you have more heart. You know, you, you know you're smarter. You're yeah. smarter. And uh, DM's like, I'm only going to listen to you. That's it. You're in my head now. And CT's like, I like that. And I love this head. <laughs> and he starts rubbing her. And to me, I was just like, wait a minute. He's trying to say you're smarter than her, not saying just blindly obey the man. <laughs> you know what I mean? What? I don't know. To me, that dialogue, that, that felt kind of funny. I mean, I your head. I love out. this head. Oh. Oh, you're taking it wrong. Her saying you're in my head and then him saying I love this head, the fact that. Not a blowjob reference at all, actually. I'm just saying, if you're a very cynical bastard like I am, he could also say, like, I told you that you're smarter than Anissa. And she's like, yeah. Um, but I'm just going to listen to you. You're in my head now. And CT's like, excellent. <laughs> CT is not a villain. I'm... He's just saying like, oh, I love this head because she's self-conscious about her hair. She's self-conscious about herself and he's just showing his affection towards her. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, he tops her up so much. In fact, she shows up into the duel without a bandana or anything. You know, the shaved head and shit. All right, so it's the duel knife, and it's I can. It's going to be Diem versus Anissa, and they just have to bid back and forth at who can lift the most amount of coffee bags. We have no idea how much a bag is, but these coffee bags, they probably don't weigh three to four pounds. They probably weigh, you know, seven, eight. They probably weigh twice that. We have I can, which has never worked out the way I wanted. Bananas no. got eliminated. What the fuck? And then Nehemiah got eliminated. What the fuck? So now it's with these two girls. The outcome of this game, I can, always seems to be kind of a coin flip or kind of random. I think it's the opposite. I think it's like that's where dreams die. The challenger oh. you're rooting for is fucked. Because, I mean, the thing's flawed. Really, the worst thing about this, spoiler alert, is that either you're going to lift it like nothing or you're not. <laughs> it's a build-up, sure, because people are like 40, 50, 70. There's some suspense leading up to it, but once it's called out, only one person gets to prove their worth. The other person just kind of like stands there and watches his fate be decided by a guess. What happens here is Diem, she tries to play it really smart. Every time that she was going to say a number, she was just acting amazing. Oh, like yeah. She was just painstaking over every answer, like, oh, 52. And then Anissa would say 55 or whatever. And then she would look up in the air, <sighs> act like she's crying, and then she'd say 60 or whatever. And, like, she was painstaking over every choice, which was a perfect move by DM. It was yeah. very intelligent. What she said was that she wanted to have Anissa call her out early. She wanted to act like she couldn't possibly push 40. That's why she's like, 40? Maybe? Yeah. Going into this, Anissa said th she figured it was three pounds. And then Diem, later on, she says that she felt it was like less than a pound each. Oh, okay. That so, makes more sense. Anissa is noticing, like, Diem looking up and she's questioning herself and she looks like she's about to tear up. The whole time Anissa's like, just don't cry, please. You know, this is awful. I believe her when she does say she feels guilty for calling Diem in. Um, I feel weird about Diem acting in this thing because she's doing a good job. She's playing which into the second, role of feel sorry for me. Which is her entire character of the season, but just amped yeah. up. She was self-aware. Maybe that's why I didn't like it. Yeah, yeah exactly. she was self-aware. Self-aware. And then she was like, okay, I'm going to play this up. DM says 100. At this point, CT says, like, be careful, DM. These things got to be weighing about, like, 5 to 10 pounds apiece. And Nisa says 101. After CT says, hey, be careful, they're, they're probably heavier than you think, DM goes from 101 to 150. When DM says 150, and Nisa's like, 100 what? What was that? And DM, you could hear, she was she sounded so small and mousy, like, 150? You know, almost like a yeah. question, and he's like, "Do it." Walks away. Do it. I, oh, I, I liked like it. I was like, yeah, oh, "She fuck. knew it." She and she goes in there. She gets strapped up and try and pull it up. And the CT the entire time's like, "Get it up, day. Look up there." Yeah, he's just like screaming every time he screams. She starts screaming and crying, pulling up with all her might. Like it's sad, but it's not budging yeah, at all. It sucks. It looks like it was way too fucking heavy for her to lift. Yeah, you wanted that moment. The cameraman zooms in. Yeah. Like, hold on. 
like that. Yeah, where, you know, you have, like, the mother, like, lifting the car off of their, like, oh, two-year-old yeah. child, yeah. standing from the burning <laughs> rubble, and you're like, ah! But, like, you know, Diem didn't have any kids. No unearthly strength. But you have Anissa standing there. She has this line that, again, will divide us. She says, you know, I'm looking at Diem breaking down, crying, sobbing. It almost breaks your heart. Almost. Yeah, exactly. Almost. <laughs> she should have said, it breaks my heart. But she says, almost breaks my heart, which means, like, she's just cold-blooded. Like, yeah, doesn't Not care. Compute. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not what? enough RAM to care. Okay, so, yeah, Diem's gone. I mean, it's it sucks. I almost teared up watching it. I'm like, no, because she's giving it her all. But it also feels like overall the character of Diem is so much bigger than just what we see on the season overall. It <laughs> is, because so, we know, you know, yeah. yeah, we know what happens in the future. Like, yeah. if we were just watching it at that time, we'd be like, she's not that strong of a competitor. She really has made it farther than she should have. <sighs> yes and no. I mean, she did win three missions overall. It did seem like out of the four girls left that Diem was definitely the weakest link. Well, the fact that she's gone... It sucks the circumstances where it feels like Anissa kind of screwed her over by kind of giving her false hope that she wasn't going to go in, sends her in, she loses. Yeah. It was like that part made us really feel sorry for Diem getting sent home, but the fact of the matter is she wasn't that good of a competitor, so. Yeah. How dare you. I know. And it almost <laughs> makes me feel sorry for her. <laughs> CT's like, I don't want Diem to go home. I feel like if she wasn't here, I'd just be a stereotypical CT, just tearing down the house, yeah. which is great. I mean, we've seen like later seasons, and the thing is, like, if he doesn't have a girl that has him smitten, where he's going to focus his attention on her, and he'll be nice to her, then he just becomes a complete animal meathead where he just wants to smash people. And Diem's gone now, so now it's like, oh shit, we're letting the animal out of the cage. This animal, though, he's got some nice words. He's like, you know, I saw how much she supported me, and uh, we'll always have a special place in each other's hearts. So everyone else is saying goodbye to Diem, and Nisa goes up, puts her arms around him, and he was like, no, yeah. You know, she's like, okay, yeah. yeah too yeah, soon, yeah. too soon. Way too soon. The wound hasn't even begun to scab over yet. Yeah. It's still gushing, man. And then he's like, oh, yeah, let's hug it out. You know, I'm going to try and right this wrong by doing a hug right now. It's like, no. You know, you sent her in after yeah. questionable circumstances. There's no way that she's going to forgive her that soon. You're going to no. have to wait till the reunion show, and then maybe you can get some closure there. But it's definitely not going to happen right after you knock her out. Again, that does not compute with Anissa. Like, she just goes in like, what is wrong with you? Like, <laughs> Except for, why am I? Yeah. I sent you home, bitch. What's your problem? Like, Anissa just doesn't get it. The social cues. Diem's literally, like, trying to wiggle her way out of Anissa's arms and shit. She's like, honestly, like, I don't want to be fake right now. I'm not going to be hugs and kisses with someone who sent me here. And she's like, I'm going home. But I'm going home with my integrity. Not everyone in this game can say that. Oh, so finally Diem gets out of Anissa's arms. Anissa just turns around. She's like, shrugs. She's like, okay, fine. She's like, the fact that you try and apologize to somebody and they don't even want to hear it, it's like, all right, did I just waste time trying to say I'm sorry? I'm just like, that's not an apology. If immediately, if you're turned down, you're like, well, fuck you. You're not being sincere with that person exactly. at all. You're just trying yeah. to give them something they want to hear. But she does. She tries to say the right thing a lot. Anissa follows it up with, people are human. They make mistakes. Almost breaking my heart, you did. You know, like, even in real life, in any situation, if you are you an asshole to someone, yep. you can't just immediately, five seconds later, say you're sorry. That's something that needs to happen the next day or something. You can't just do it immediately, and that's what they need to try to do. And it was like, well, of course she's going to turn you down. And she's like, well, fine, whatever. I don't know. Uh, we'll eventually make it up to Anissa. I mean, we can't leave it like this where we're just like, Anissa, you suck, and you're a robot, and shit like that. Although, it was really funny to do Robot Anissa. Yeah. yeah. I enjoyed it. <laughs> robot I'm gonna, Yoda. I'm going to hold on to this hatred for her <laughs> until she does something to redeem herself, which I'm sure she will in the next challenge. Yeah, I mean, we don't know. We have two more episodes left. Before we get there, though, this is the last scene we got to talk about. Diem leaps into CT's arms, and Diem says, CT gave me confidence, pushed me to realize that I don't need to be ashamed or scared. 
And I feel so happy, so lucky, and so blessed that I got to do everything I wanted to do and uh, finally be okay with being me. You can't put a price on that. Credits. A really sweet moment and a great way to tie up their relationship on the show. CT and DM, they had such a good relationship. Like, they really seemed to match. Like, not only with the challenge, but in life. For them to be split apart now, and now she's going home, it sucks. I don't want to see them break apart at any point. I want them to go all the way to the final. We've said that DM was kind of like the princess, spoiled princess of the challenge, which she was. Yeah. But it's not like she was a bad person at all, like Svetlana said. She's like, no, she was a good person. She was a wonderful, beautiful angel. But we are playing a game, you know? So in the end, Anissa shouldn't feel guilty at all. Sure, she gave her some fucked up information by saying, I'm not going to vote you in because you're winning. It was yeah. just like Anissa in the moment trying to say something nice, yeah. but she didn't think about it politically at all. It's a bummer. DM's gone. All right, so if you like this, make sure to like it, share it, comment. Make sure to check out the Gauntlet episodes that I'm covering, uh, solo style, yet I'm still taking the comments, and I'm going to include them in the podcast. What episode of those are you on? I just did the first one. I know, yeah, yeah. that was like a month ago or two. Or three. Episode two of the Gauntlet is going to be my... Chinese Democracy album. Dude, I like, listened to it. The first one was awesome. And the fact that you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to do it again, I was like, it blew my mind because the first one was great. Thank you. It just wasn't fun. It Honestly, it felt weird because it's one thing for me to cut you off and keep talking. It's a whole other thing to just be there in a room Cut yourself yourself off and then more of your own points. And you're like, wait, you're being redundant. It was good though. So if you want to watch the Gauntlet YouTube episode, you could do that. Leave a fucking comment, man, and I'll put that in the podcast. I don't share the same opinion as other challengers because, like, A, I like Wes. A lot of people don't like Wes. And I also think that Gauntlet 1 is probably the best challenge season they've ever had. Gauntlet 2 is their second best. And I have then, not watched either of those seasons, so you need to crank up those podcasts so I can I will watch the episode and then listen to your episode. Uh, what else we gotta add? I I guess uh, nothing I else. It. I'm um, Vincent Cloud. Well, well, no, what? So. Um. Well, uh, I was gonna say that, you know, can't leave this out. Anissa won herself a Seiko watch from TJ, <laughs> and everyone has won one of those fucking watches this season. So, you know, <laughs> she won herself a watch. Good for her. That was just one thing we did not mention that I had to throw in there True. because it's like we're another recycled prize. But you know. You can count the seconds it takes for DM to walk away. Uh, if we were in a big group, I would have been like, Dave, no, we were trying to ditch that guy. <laughs> we're all trying to go. <laughs> <laughs> we had to bring it back. All right, man, let's stop this for once and for all. I'm Vincent Cloud. I'm David Lauer. Uh, Dave watched a lot of seasons all of a sudden, so he's not going to be the fresh take that I once brought him in for. Like, that was a big deal in signing you to the show where i'm just like dave he's got a fresh pair of eyes man he's never seen the show before i, I went I've and now been, you're jaded as fuck i can tell is. yeah i am i i binge watched rivals cutthroat battle of axes yeah i'm on battle of the seasons right now uh, um 